this, this is really gross. So let me, let me put this, let me say this real quick. The, this story is very graphic. So the, the story and the photos are very graphic. So if you have a weak stomach, don't watch this video. So I have a, uh, a quick story for you that, uh, as you guys know, I don't have teeth. These, these are fake. They don't, they're, they're not real. And the story I want to tell you guys is how that became, how it became. Um, because, like, I, I got made fun of, like, I had, I had bad teeth when I was a kid. Um, so I got, like, made fun of all through, all through school and everything. And, like, and so I don't let it bother me at all. That, um, because no one, like, when you get everything said to you, like, there's not much people can say that will, that will, uh, like, either hurt your feelings or that you haven't heard before. You're like, whatever, I don't care. And so, um, here's, I'm just going to give you guys a quick story, uh, of how, how it happened. How, why, I'd, why I don't have teeth and why, why I don't wear these fake teeth. As you can see, they're actually, they're falling out. So they don't, they don't fit right. Um, and like how, like how bad they were and everything. Uh, I'll, I'll post up some, uh, some photos. Hold on. I'll post up some some photos of what my teeth used to look like. I just have the top. I took the bottom ones out because they don't fit right, but I still have still have the top ones in. Cause they, cause it's like a big, it's like a retainer, and it like suction cups to the top of my mouth. And so this light, like right here, is like perfect. Um, so look at that. Ooh, pretty. Um, so how, okay, so how it began is. When I was six years old, like I was always acting out and everything. Like I was, like I was, I was a hellion as a kid, as always. Hold on, got a, got a message from my friend. I, go I have been sitting in motherfucking traffic for thirty minutes already, and <laughs> my GPS says I'm still thirty minutes away. Dork. Lel. All right. So anyway, okay. So I was six years old, and. I was acting out everywhere, acting out all the time, like, you know, the typical six-year-old. Um, and so, my mom said, well, this kid's broken, I gotta go return him. And so, she took me to the doctor, doctor said, sorry, ma'am, there's nothing we can do for you, like, you break it, you buy it, you know, it's one of those kind of deals. <laughs> and so, uh, so they actually sent me to a psychiatrist to see, um, like, why I was acting out, or like, if, if there was something, if I was broken, pretty much. And um, I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder, which is a which is a manic disorder in your brain, where the chemicals in your brain um, you have in the like mine mine are weird. It's different for everyone. Like every case is different, but it's all it's all in like a big nest. But the uh, but the nest has a bunch of different strands, so it acts different for everyone. Um, for mine, my manic stages, which is where I, I get pissed off for no reason. Uh, I lash out for no reason. Uh, I have a very, very short, non-existent fuse in the summertime, which is like uh, I think from like May to August, June to August, something like that. Like I have a very, very short fuse, and I get pissed off at the dumbest things, and for no reason, which is horrible. Like I, I hope nobody ever gets bipolar again. It's the dumbest disease ever. And then in the wintertime. Uh, it all flips around, and I get super depressed over nothing. Like, um, oh, I only slept for five hours today. Or I slept for eight hours. I'm so depressed. I don't want to get out of bed. I don't want to go anywhere. I don't... I, it's just super depressing. And it sucks. It's horrible. So anyway, so since I was diagnosed with this as a kid, um... I got put on a medication called lithium citrate, and what that is, it's it's a medication to help even it out. And uh, for the most part, the lithium citrate is mercury and salt. For the, for the most part, is what it is. And I, it was like a little the little two tablespoon cup thing, like cold medicine would be in. And 
so I take one shot of it in the morning and one shot of it at night. And like any typical six-year-old, seven-year-old, eight-year-old, I don't want to brush my teeth, you know. Did you brush your teeth today? Yeah, of course I did. No. They, and then I'll eat junk food and I'll eat candy and blah, 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 blah. Like any other kid would, right? And so <clears throat> the, I'm, I'm taking this shot of mercury, pretty much, and it would just sit on my teeth and on my gums um, all day long because I didn't brush my teeth like any other kid would. Uh, and then same thing at night. I'd take it right before I go to bed. It'd sit on my teeth all night long, sit on my gums all night long. And so over time, they, it just it rotted away the enamel. And so which the enamel is all the white, the white capping of your teeth. It's all the white parts, if you don't already know. And so it just slowly rotted it out. And when your enamel is gone, like everything underneath, it just it, a rot. It's black. It turns black. Like I, I can see if I can put a photo like right here of what my teeth used to look like before I got them taken out. And so what I would do that once it got to that point of being rotted, of being rot, like it, it was, it's bad. Like you can see the photo right here. The it's it's not fixable of, of what it was. Like the, the fixable part was removing the teeth. And I'll get to that here in a minute. And so anyway, um, so it got, got to the point that they were black. Um, There's a little bit of enamel left, you know, like their yellow tint or whatever. Um, and then a bunch of like black cutouts and holes and blah, blah, blah. And so in order, so in order for me to feel comfortable with that, what I did is that I then refused to brush them even more so plaque and, plaque and tartar would build up. And plaque and tartar is like a, it's like a whitish cream color. So when it would build up on top of that black, it looked from a distance like I had like regular teeth like this. It looked like this from a distance. But if I ever brushed it, brushed them, and I got rid of all that plaque and tartar and everything, <clears throat> plaque and tartar, my mouth looked horrible. Like it looked, like it was disgusting. Like it was bad. And so in that case for not brushing them as a kid, then I'm rotting out and then not brushing them as I grew up, uh, they, they formed infections. That's hard to say with false teeth, infections. Um, I had multiple, what are they called? Um, starts with an A, uh, something like that. I don't, I don't remember what they're called. But I, I had uh, multiple pouches of poison uh, that were forming in my mouth. And I have a couple of photos that I'll post up right here of uh, this, these photos I'm putting up right now are I think like a six hour time lapse. They, I had, uh, it was one of, these, one of these two sides of my face. I don't remember which one it was. I think, I think it was this side. No, it was this side. It was this side of my face. They uh, abscessed, that's the word, abscessed. So they, they would form abscess in my mouth, which was like just pockets of pus, pockets of poison. And I had, I had one like, right here that was really bad. It was like way up here on my gum. And you're not supposed to pop them because it's, it's literally poison. If you swallow it, you could die. And so it was hurting, like it wasn't puffed up or anything, but it was hurting so bad that I popped it with a needle. But anyway, so um, there's an abscess like right here in my gum. And I took a needle and there's like a little itty bitty white bump, almost like a pimple. And I popped it like up here in my, in my, uh, in my inside, inside my mouth, like in my gum. I popped it and I could literally put my fingers right here on my face and drag my fingers down my face like this and this ooze and pus and blood and everything was, it wasn't squirting but it, it was literally coming out of my mouth like because I was squeezing this poison pocket out of my mouth and uh, of course like I'd spit it all out and everything. Uh, I washed, I think after I got the initial part out I did a couple of swishes and, and mouthwash with peroxide, I think it was. 
uh, just to kind of like help do, I don't know, so I heard something about peroxide, so, so I used it. Um, and then, but like these photos that are going to go right here, uh, they, this part of my face, like at 6 a.m., like it was hurting. I had another abscess somewhere that I couldn't see, but this part of my face was like starting to puff up a little bit. And, um, uh, it, uh, and then like two hours later, it was still hurting. Like, it, it was, it was just pain. Like, I could feel it swelling. Like, I could feel my face swelling out. And this last photo that's right here, uh, this one, this photo right here, is the final bit. We're at the hot, we're literally at the emergency room. Cause my face, my face is swollen. Like, this whole, this whole pocket right here of my face is like, it's, like sticking out like this far out of my head and it's just an abscess of poison and nasty and just stuff but I couldn't I couldn't do anything about it uh, so we're at the we're at the emergency room we're at the ER and they give me some kind of antibiotic to, to help it and they give me a shot of, a couple shots of steroids or something I think I think it was steroids and antibiotics uh, to help bring it down and it was at that point that it was so bad that we couldn't do anything. We ha we I had to go do something. Like I had to get something done. Like I couldn't go to a dentist because there was literally just there's hardly any teeth left. So I, I you can't go to a regular dentist. So you have to go to an oral surgeon. And in my town we have I don't know probably got dozens of dozens of oral surgeons. And uh, they we went to a couple of them. They said that we're not touching it. It's too risky. There's one guy I don't remember his name. He was in the next town over, and he said that it's risky, but I'm gonna take the risk. But we're getting, we're taking all of them out. Like we have to take out all of your teeth, like all of them, or else this will become a worse problem. But we went in like on, we went for like a review like on a Monday, like to say, hey, what can we do? And he said, you're coming in tomorrow. And we're getting this done. We're taking all your teeth out tomorrow. Like that's how urgent it was. And um, oh, back step a little bit. So for since I was getting all these abscess and rot and all this crap, they this poison formed like a. I was getting massive, massive headaches. They they weren't migraines, but they were. It was pain. Like it was a pain. Uh, I wouldn't quite call it a headache. But it was just like um, an annoying pain. Like it did, it didn't, it wasn't like painful. It was just always there. Um, so and it was like right here in my temple. I couldn't push on it. I couldn't, I couldn't take anything for it. Advil. I I even took. There was sometimes it was hurting, and I had to go to the hospital because it was hurting so bad. And they gave they gave me 750 milligrams of Vicodin. Did not help because it was it was poison in my nerves and if what it did is that one of my teeth back here it formed like a tube of poison up to my brain like it was poisoning my brain that's what's wrong with you now um and it was literally poison going into my brain and that's what was causing these agonizing i'm just gonna call them a headache because that's what it was it was a ache in my head and uh so they were they were just I was getting, I had them all the time. Like it what didn't come and go. It was, it started like at seven o'clock Monday morning and it didn't stop until Wednesday, three weeks later of just the same agonizing pain, the same annoying pain, like right here in my temple. And um, there was times I went and got these liquid uh, Tylenol uh, things that are like $5 uh, at the store. Uh, and I was literally drinking a bottle of them like every three or four hours. I was drinking a bottle, which you're not you're supposed to say two tablespoon, two like little cup, little tablespoon, like every eight hours. And I was drinking a bottle every four hours. And it's it's a big bottle, like the bottle's like this big. And I was drinking the whole thing, and uh, it didn't help. And there's like this numbing stuff that we got out of the store. It's like a numbing wand. I put it up there and tried to numb it out and everything. Did not help. Like nothing, like nothing was helping this. 
it was hurting so bad. And like I would literally, I'd pace around the house like I'm doing now, but I'd pace on like holding my head and like doing this and like, and it was only here. Like it wasn't anywhere else but other right here in my temple. And what it was, it was a poison, poison line. And, um, but I, I'm pacing around, like a shower going, I'm, I'm trying to put hot water on it. Like it was just, it was agonizing all the time. The Megan was there through the whole thing. Like she knows exactly how much it sucked and it sucks for her and because she was up with me all the time and um, trying to calm me down because it was hurting so bad and everything. Uh, but anyway, so now we're going to jump back forward to the doctor. Uh, so we're at the orthodontist. They, of course, they put me under. They have to put me under. Um, under anesthesia, like they knocked me out like I was gone. And I, the, only thing, the only thing is I remember him putting the, putting the IV in my arm. And I looked over, looked over at this IV, and there's this like white chemical going through this tube, which is the which is the knockout juice. And uh, I, I looked over at it. And next thing I knew, I was awake again. And um, what they what they did was is it in my gums? They literally they cut my gums, like your your gums like sit like this, right? So let me set this down real quick. So, all right, so your gums are like this. They literally took the knife. They took the knife like this. And like here, here we'll use, the, we'll use these fidget spinners. All right, so these are your teeth, right? Uh, sit, these are your teeth sitting in your gums. So I'll oh, use the white one. So your teeth are sitting in your gums like this. They literally took the knife and cut my gums like this all the way around and yanked my teeth out of the bone. And then they... Then they took their sewing thing and they they looped my gums like this back together. So it's like cut all the like there's like just a gash like this. I'm like like my gums were like this pretty much. And then they they took their their sewing thing and they looped they looped my gums back together all the way around top and bottom. So uh, and then which I have a photo I'll put right here of what it looked like after they were. After everything was all done, there's holes everywhere. It, people have people have 32 teeth in their mouth. N normally, they have 32 teeth. So I had 34 holes or 32 holes in my mouth. Plus, they removed my wisdom teeth at the same time, which you have four wisdom teeth, and most of the time you get them removed. Um, and then sometimes they're bony impacted, which bony impacted means instead of I'm using all sorts of props. So instead of your tooth like going like this in your mouth, instead of standing up. It grows in sideways, like this. So, you, so instead of having a tooth growing like that in your head, you have it growing in like this. And so, I had two, I had two or three of them that were bony impacted. So I had three of them going in like this, instead of growing up or down. So I got all those removed. So the, and so, they're they're a wisdom, a wisdom tooth, or it's a molar, and it's the, the tooth with the bone at the end of the tooth is literally it's like this long. So, you, like, like only even though you only see like this much of your tooth, like here, well, like right here, I like say that's what you see. Your bone is actually like up here, like the the whole tooth is like up there, like that. So, you, you can imagine I had thirty two holes in my mouth with all this twine, like in my gums, and I couldn't. I literally could not eat. Like I, I literally could not eat. Because it was dangerous for one, for two it was sore, and um, so I was like, I didn't eat for like a week. Like I was drinking like protein. I could still drink and everything, but I was drinking like protein shakes and um, orange juice, trying to get whatever nutrients I could in my system. But uh, um, like for at least a week. I didn't eat anything solid. Like, I, I eventually, like, after a couple weeks, I got to, like, super, super buttered up mac and cheese. Like, it, like it, I didn't even have to chew it. Like, I put it in my mouth and just swallow it. Like, it was so buttery. Or mashed potatoes. Um, but now it's been, I don't even know, six years, something like that, six, seven years. Uh, I can eat anything. I can eat anything except for, like, super hard things. Like, I can't eat peanuts. I eat, like an actual peanut. I can't eat those. Um, I can eat chips fine. I can eat steak. I could probably eat a steak faster than you could. 
Um, but anything that's like really hard. Um, which the only thing I can really think of are like peanuts. Um, so, uh, that's pretty much it. But um, we're going to jump back to the doctor again. After I got everything, I had to go to the doctor twice. The, the first time was the initial removal of everything, um, getting everything done. And he said that we're, we're lucky that we went then because at any moment that there was so much poison, so much bacteria, so much, so much, so much of crap that was in my mouth. The, the poison, the bacteria, any of that could have killed me at any instant. Any instant that it was so bad that there was so much just bad stuff in there it could have killed me at any instant he said I'm I'm very lucky to even be alive and to get them all removed so that was the that was the initial removal and then like a month later or something like that after like the swelling went down stuff healed up uh, I was like two weeks or a month something like that um, I was getting like bone like bone fragments and stuff like in my gums and it was hurting and everything so so we went back to uh went back and they did the they put me under again and then they just kind of like filed down the bones and i was recording for too long and the camera turned off so i went so i went back the second time and they um they kind of like smoothed out the bones and cut out some extra crap that was like kind of sitting there and everything um and then like six months or a year after that um, after all, all this swelling really went down because like when they when they pulled all the teeth out they pulled out the bones and I'm, I have holes on my bone and my jawbone of where the teeth were and so after like a year and everything my jaw got really small like it gets it gets a lot smaller than what it would be if you had real teeth because you're filling all those gaps so now that those gaps are healed they it, they it constricted and so it made my jaw a lot smaller and everything so this is like six months a year I think down the line that I go when I I go get um, dentures which I think I don't even remember how old I was I think I was like 22 23 something like that going to go get dentures I, mean, I might have been might have been 24 I don't know was early 20s like I'm, I'm going to get dentures that you know they do the they do the fun little like gum cup thing to your mouth and all that crap and um, it's the same, I actually have the same pair, and I never liked them, I never got used to them, and, which is, which is why I never wear them, because I, they, they feel weird, I, I, they feel like I have more, I, I because I do, I, I have more stuff in my mouth that I'm trying to deal with, and, um, so I never, I never, I never wore them enough to get used to them, to wear them, and so I just don't. And I, I re-taught myself how to talk. There's something I slur on a lot of my words. Um, it's because my, my mouth doesn't connect. Like uh, if I say Z, a Z, my Z's or S's, my, I, they do connect. It connects now because I have teeth in. But they, my mouth does not connect. Like it, I, I can, the only way it'll connect if I push my jaw up. And it, but it's like I slimy snake slither, you know. But it, it just doesn't work like that. And so, like, people are like, well, why are you slurring on your words, and blah, blah, blah. It's like, well, because I don't have any teeth, because my mouth literally doesn't connect. Like, my teeth will go, my mouth will go like this. Like, it won't connect. And so, that's my tooth story. You know, if you want to, if you have any other experiences like this, or you know somebody that's having the same problems, or if you've done it yourself, or if you want to scare your own kids into brushing their teeth, then I just figured I'd share, I'd share this story with you guys. And... Let's you know, let let you guys know why I don't have teeth, why I don't wear my dentures, why I slur my words, and why I don't let it bother me. So, I will see you guys next time. Yeah.